Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to the Waterstones vlog. So today I'm going to talk to you about a very special, intriguing little book that I've read recently and absolutely loved. And that is Tinderbox by Megan Dunn. So Tinderbox is a narrative non-fiction book that looks at a time in Megan Dunn's life when she sought to rewrite Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 from the perspective of its female characters. But it turned into more than that. It's a sort of diary of her journey of trying to rewrite this book while figuring out her career as a bookseller as Borders, the bookshop, was going into administration and liquidation here in the UK and over in New Zealand, uh, where she has also lived and is from. It's a book that really got under my skin somehow. Megan Dunn's prose is so fresh and absorbing. She's self-deprecating in there. She is realistic. She is funny, witty. It's a really interesting insight into the act of sort of creation and writing and what it takes to write a book, particularly when you're writing a book from a source text and a much loved source text, such as Fahrenheit 451. It's also a really interesting look at literary culture and the way that we as readers uh, receive books and engage with the literary world. There is a lot of talk of her time in bookshops, both dealing with customers and books that come in and Obviously, as a bookseller, a little bit biased, those bits were just really quite interesting, very on the money, funny, made me laugh, recognised a lot in there. But I think even if I wasn't a bookseller, it's a really interesting insight into the world of bookselling. Throughout the course of Tinderbox, Megan Dunn takes us through this creative process of her trying to rewrite Fahrenheit 451. But she's also trying to get to know the book again. She's trying to reread it, but ends up just watching the Francois Truffaut 1966 version of the film, which I haven't watched yet, but I have picked up a copy of since uh, reading Tinderbox. So she ends up watching this film and is looking at the differences between the original book the film and the subsequent stage plays that have um, been put on of 451. And it's really interesting to look at Fahrenheit 451 in the sort of realm of literary adaptations. And the thing that Megan Dunn was noticing was there were characters allowed to live in the film and then in the stage play. That initially Ray Bradbury was very hesitant to, to the, towards those changes. And actually in the introduction to the new version of Fahrenheit 451, which I shall put here, um, he mentions how initially when the film was made in 1966, he was very resistant to those changes. But actually when he watched it and got to, to realise Francois Truffaut's vision of his text, he actually reconsidered. And in the version of the stage play that Ray Bradbury then went on to write, he actually allowed those same characters to live and tweak things a little bit. So it's a really interesting look at a source text, adaptations, how you can reinvigorate a text for the modern era, but how some of these texts are as timeless and as popular as they are because they say something to us across time. Obviously, very interesting element of 451 and the key thing that Megan Dunn was keen to explore was the masculinity of Fahrenheit 451 and that the only real two female characters are supporting characters. You have one female character who is sort of the catalyst for change in the way the main character thinks and then the other character is his wife and is a supporting character and is one that he has to kind of work to change her mind and things go from there. So it was quite interesting to look at. I will confess, I had actually not read Fahrenheit 451 before I read Tinderbox. And that was something that I actually found really interesting while I was reading Tinderbox, because it was like I was learning about the book from an outsider's perspective. And it actually then gave me a new appreciation and a new desire to read Fahrenheit 451. It had always been a book that was on my periphery. As a bookseller, as a big reader, it's always one of those that you kind of think you should have read. And I hadn't got around to it, but when I finished Tinderbox, I went out and I bought a copy of Fahrenheit 451 and I sat and I read it. And I had this new appreciation of it, because everything that I was reading I had a little bit of context for, from Megan Dunn and her explorations into the background of Ray Bradbury's writing, and also just a more critical awareness. Now that's not to say that Fahrenheit 451 can't be and shouldn't be enjoyed as a book in its own right. It really can. It's a, it's a fantastic book, very interesting read, particularly now, very prescient still. That's the enduring nature of these books. But that's also why they are so rife for wanting to reinterpret them as Megan Dunn wanted to. The other reason this book takes a little bit of a turn is that Megan Dunn went up against the Bradbury estate as to whether or not she was allowed to reinterpret this text and was essentially given the no-go. So this book became a slightly different thing. Instead of being a rewriting of Fahrenheit 451, it became this diary of trying to do that, of exploring it, of thinking about her time as a bookseller, how she interacts with literature, with literary culture. 
it's just such a fascinating book. It is so rich with ideas and with passion and with creativity. It is something so different, a work of narrative nonfiction that deconstructs the notion of creativity and it just really got under my skin. As I say, Megan Dunn's prose is fresh, it is vital, it is knowing, it is innovative. There is something about this book that will just get under your skin. If you haven't read Fahrenheit 451 and you're wondering now, oh, which way should I read them? I can recommend the way that I did it. It may not necessarily be the right way, but it really worked for me. It was so interesting reading a book about a book that I hadn't read and then reading that book and getting something from it there. If you have read Fahrenheit 451, then I absolutely urge you to go and get a copy of Tinderbox. It will stretch your sort of understanding of Fahrenheit 451, give you a new approach, and it's just something so fascinating. So yeah, Tinderbox by Megan Dunn is a really intriguing look at Fahrenheit 451, the nature of creativity, adaptation, literary culture, something that will get under your skin. Her prose is so readable, I cannot wait to see what Megan Dunn does next, and I know that whatever it is, I'm gonna go and get a copy because she's just got such a beautiful way with words that I can't wait. So go and get yourself a copy of Megan Dunn's Tinderbox and I shall see you next time on the Waterstones vlog. Bye.